Good evening and welcome to the stream tonight. Let me fix this light again. Whenever I turn it on, it dims slightly, which gives that flicker effect. Um, one of these days, I'll remember to do that when I test the equipment before I start. <laughs> uh, that will probably be the day I replace that light with something else. Good evening anyway. We shall be continuing with what is almost a completed... Um, image um, so what needs to be done on this two specifically two areas really there's a little bit more shading to do here it doesn't quite match that so a little some sort of patches around here that aren't quite uh, smooth um, and then this kind of much of this this stripe and these two smaller stripes here uh, this wants to come a little bit darker uh, the original color is blue so it's a little bit light I'm not worried too much about that but I do want it to be a little bit darker I want to make this stripe and this stripe a little bit darker as well but I need I need the contrast between these two in order for you to be able to see it. Eddie Fall Guy, good evening, welcome to the studio. Um, so there's just a general darkening of these uh, and then I need to do a little bit of shading. This is a white stripe so I need to do a little bit of shading just around here uh, to accentuate the shape. Um, this, this is a point rather like the front of a ship so this curves out like the bow of a ship. Um, so I need to just do a little bit of shading to accentuate that look. So it looks a little bit more pointy. The headlamp uh, spaces uh, do help with that illusion, but I need a bit more. Fluffy Twiglet, good evening. Welcome also to the studio. So... I shall turn this on and switch that tool out for the other one because <coughs> that I was done specifically, used that specifically for the trees. Um, I prefer this one for larger areas. <coughs> okay. All right. That obviously had a hair on it. I don't know if you can see but the smoke coming off of it. Bobix, good evening. Um, <laughs> precisely, <laughs> Fluffy Twiddler is correct. We will try. Well, we will see. Um, um, I think is the better way. <coughs> I'm not. You know, I'm not going to force finish it. That's when you know if you start rushing to try and finish it, that's the potential for making mistakes. So, uh, um, it's feasible to finish it tonight. We shall see if we actually get there. I'm talking of which I should get on with it. Um, I swapped the tool out because this one I find better than the other one for doing large areas uh, smoothly. So that's um, that's the reason for swapping it out. But I have also noticed the connector is a little bit loose. So after the stream tonight, I'll need to do a little bit of maintenance on this on the connector in the back of this tool just to close the um, the contacts up a little bit inside so that it makes better contact with the cable what I um, I noticed it was a little bit loose and, and being a little bit loose it will generate heat there <coughs> and if it's generating heat there it isn't generating it at the tip I'm just busy darkening that and I actually want it to do up here.
just a little bit around there that's that's almost enough for for that just about that's That's actually a ring, a mark, a, a ring mark. At the moment, it looks a bit like a watermark, <laughs> but uh, I think that will be okay for up there. If I can get it out of the glare of the the light. <clears throat> uh, okay, sorry, I'm going to now rechat. <laughs> Never rush out, um, <clears throat> except if that's the aim uh, of doing it, in like a two-minute sketch, then by all means. Uh, this particular case, <laughs> not when I've already got 20, almost 20 hours in it. <laughs> uh, how's that for a coincidence there, Fluffy Twiggler? A music band called Train. Um... I wonder what sort of rhythms they use in the background. Something like that, perhaps. Um, you are playing with Blender. I've not played with Blender at all. So, Blender has a reputation of being horrendously difficult to learn um, because of all the p possible options that you've got in it and. Um, less than excellent documentation perhaps i don't know i've never looked at it um i i was thinking of looking at it for at one time for doing certain 3d modeling but i eventually went with a different tool <coughs> did you initially sketch out the picture or just dive straight in with the im no i sketched it out um i'll show you the sketch if i can remember where it where I put the sketch. It's around here. There it is. So I just took a, this is an A4 board. So I just took a blank sheet of A4, drew some lines on it with a ruler, which was quite useful, and then sketched sketched the train in there. Um, and uh, because it's easier to erase from here and one or two other things uh, so just to you know to mess about with um <coughs> so i don't get um graphite on the on the board which can be difficult to remove and then uh, just used uh, some trace down paper just to put that rough outline on the board and then worked from there with the iron it's um, it's an easier way of doing it there are times when I will just go with an iron um, but with this wanting to have very straight edges that look parallel it was better to do it off on the paper than on here one of the things you have to be careful of um, with a pencil see if I go over with the pyrographic tool it's a bit like putting varnish over the top of the pencil and the pencil's there forever then and sometimes it, it stands out and shows out it shows through and you don't always want that. If it's a real dark area, it doesn't really matter. But if it's going to be a light area, you quite often don't want that pencil mark to show through. So um, the true what I will generally do is erase it, literally erase a small section with a rubber and then use a tool in some way to put either an edge in like a solid line or just a light shading to the edge cat hair around my nose it's tickling me and then work from there ah uh, yeah I've got um, I've got one that I ought to incorporate some the, the problem with uh, with um, animated intros uh, is triggering them <coughs> or, or triggering the trans uh, transitions between them you can trigger the trigger the <coughs> the animation quite or relatively easily in a web browser or uh, a video player, but then the end of it 
won't trigger into another scene <laughs> and so you have to manually trigger it so you kind of got to watch it and then um, and then trigger uh, but <coughs> I've got one of those um, ready to go I just have to have to sort of incorporate it into the um, um, into the broadcast setup uh, Fia Reaper did me uh, two really nice ones uh, which one will be for the start and one will be for the end uh, of uh, the Zaragan art being um, chipped or carved out of a block of wood but uh, that should be should be cool though I mean yes the only thing that's missing from that's right indeed yeah I didn't do it <coughs> um, whilst I can do 3d stuff I've never done animation um, so that that's mm, might get around to it one day but uh, 3 um, 3d sculpting or, or 3d modeling is something that I um, I've done a, a small amount of I'm gonna say a reasonable amount but a small amount of um, I did quite a bit for a model, a, a flight simulator for models, and I, I um, contributed quite a few uh, 3D models um, into that particular project, and uh, not the flight envelopes, but just the models themselves. Uh, and so I, I learned 3D modeling for that, and I want to use that and possibly something like Sculptris as well when I get the 3D printer working, so I can do. 3D shapes um, in in uh, in FDM in in um, 3D printing. Maybe try out some things like vases and stuff like that. And also <coughs> some of the you can get uh, wood fiber plastic as well, which will you can use a pyrographic tool on, and you can sort of carve. So could be interesting. Uh, yeah, trying to get the right shape. Yes, well, <laughs> that's a, no matter what piece of art it is, getting the right shapes is 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 the key <laughs> to most art. Uh, and that and perhaps one of the hardest bits. I know with with um, the only type of an animation I'm sort of half familiar with is stop motion animation, and I know Blender doesn't work that way. It does it as um, like a scripted animation. So I'm not uh, not familiar with it. But when you've got talented people like Fear Reaper, um, and I couldn't do anything um, half as good. There you are, you see I'm breaking my own rules. <laughs> uh, I know every... That was Junior, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so everybody can, yeah, just needs practice, which is perfectly true. I should be able to do my own animations, but I just need practice. Oh, Obix, you'd be, you be surprised. Um, I am sure there is stuff that you could quite easily do. A lot of the time, or many part of the time, it may well require practice to be able to do as well as you would like to. Um, but often it is just a case of um, having the confidence to do it and um, then realizing it will take practice to get better it's also surprising what people will discount as being art uh, or a talent for things yeah you we quite well i've had people sort of um so I'm saying they're, they're no good at, uh, at at creative things like art, and yet they're a programmer, which is a creative thing. Uh, I don't know. 
Well, maybe <laughs> you could go a halfway house, AD Fall Guy, and get him to show you how to do it. There's something. To, there is something to be said, obviously, with trying it for yourself, and there's something to be said to to having somebody point out the things to avoid doing because they're the wrong way, which you don't know when you're starting out. Now, I want to make the bottom edge of this in particular slightly darker than the top. Again, this is a curve, um, so the bottom will naturally be darker than the uh, the top, just because it's now starting to get into shot. Up here, you've got the light, which is lightning, making the top lighter than this. As you come down, <coughs> you get the, the shade making the bottom darker than the middle area. So it's that that telegraphs the the shape to your brain. So that's um, one thing I need to do is to make the bottom darker. But I need to graduate it very much like I did up there, in order that it, I don't have a straight a, a solid edge that you can see. It's got to be gradual. Unless I put a panel line in, that will make it really obvious. Um, I was intending to put some panel lines into here, but I think the simple you lack a doorway for example here which there is on the real or was on the real train but I'm kind of looking at it and going you know what it doesn't need it it looks okay as it is it looks good as it is adding that extra detail will it be is it worth doing I'm not sure it might just be sort of adding you know, add some detail in which is actually at the end detracts from the image rather than adds to it. It's one of the um, one of the dilemmas um, in, in any art form I guess is knowing when to stop when when adding something is adding too much. They, these lines here um, which are the power lines in this particular case because this is a this the mo it's a monorail running on a, a concrete beam and that, that's the concrete beam so there's a big wheel or two underneath the the carriages that it sits on the top and you get wheels on the side like this which stop it wandering about um, the original lines were drawn with the ruler in pencil uh, sorry well on the no on here they were drawn on here with a pencil and a ruler uh, and then he raised back um, but I, they went over with a pyrographic tool freehand so whilst I was following a very faint line it was done uh, done freehand um, the one that's underneath was the, the shadow there was done completely freehand um, and then uh, so all it was done with is is this this tool here which is a it's described as a writing tip, but with the temperature turned down and um, held reasonably lightly on the wood, you can get hair thin lines with this. Um, it's if you turn it up, they, they get wider, the heat spreads. Um, but this was done uh, fairly cool to get the lines, and then time spent just to actually widen them for the for the copper conductors and uh, moved very slowly to get the dark lines without widening it too much uh, for the shadows. Not used any real amount of tools doing this. Um, that, that writing tip, this main shader and this uh, also this sort of flat shader and um, this is small if you like and a medium. Uh, and this was just used for the uh, for the tree-like uh, texture on the bottom, uh, using it more like a stamp, uh, just pressing it down.
but if you're after fine lines you c very fine lines um, you can get a tool like this one ow that connector definitely wants tightening up it's getting a little too warm um, you can get tools like this one which is effectively a knife blade it's not as it's not razor sharp but it's like a knife blade um, you can actually use this for cutting like plastic or mylar sheets it's great for making stencils with if you do stencil work um, but you can also use it on wood you can actually cut wood with it as well um, and it will create really fine lines uh, but to be honest the writing tool does almost as good Yeah, that connector there is getting hot um, not too hot to touch but it would get uncomfortable if I held it there for more than about another 30 seconds uh, which means I've got to sort of fix that um, <coughs> fix that the, the uh, close up the contacts inside so it makes a better contact It's just waste heat is that so and, and wasting heat and wasting power so it's something I shall fix but I'll do it after the stream it's a bit fiddly with these it's the one thing I don't like about these types of connectors especially in the body of the pen they're really hard to tighten up you ideally should get inside and use a pair of pliers to uh, to squeeze them up I have to use a tiny screwdriver uh, and, and do a little bit of levering See, it's, it's about the only thing I don't like about these particular tools. Okay, that's going dark out. Good. What other imagery? Yeah. Okay. Time to show off, is it? Okay. Let's start with some finished pieces then. So we've got this one, uh, which is uh, been called Salute to Sunset which is African savannah. Uh, it might be an Indian elephant. I have no idea. I can't remember which one has the biggest ears. Um, but it's a, a, obviously an elephant and a giraffe at sunset. And the elephant, oh, I feel like the elephant sort of, you know, waving goodbye to the sun. That's kind of the idea. Um, I've got a door hanger. Uh, with a fox on it yes I could do slightly better <laughs> uh, but that's an awake fox and on the other side we've got a sleeping fox so you've got a sort of a, a do not disturb sign effectively and then we have uh, two pictures of pussy cats I've got this one of junior He's a black and white cat. He has appeared on stream uh, from time to time. He's currently laid out on my computer just to the right of the desk here. 
Um, I don't think he'll join the stream because he's laid on top of the air vent, which you, you might imagine is, is quite a warm place, which they like to lay on. And this one is Felix. He's a really dark brown and black, uh, sorry, uh, dark brown and white pussy cat. He also appears very occasionally on stream, even rarer than uh, Junior does. He's a little bit poorly today, so he's he's in another room, um, quietly uh, curled up asleep at the moment. So that's um, that's the two pussy cats, the fox and the uh, the African savanna. I have uh, a couple more, which are practice pieces. So these were these are done on a different wood, uh, which is cheaper, <laughs> which is why, <laughs> which is why I practice on cheaper wood. Um, let me just lift this camera a little bit because it's a bit bigger than the candle is showing. So that's um, as what it says there, uh, an Avro Lancaster uh, World War Two bomber. Oh, Exilian, good evening. <laughs> Indeed, cat lovers. Hopefully everybody on the stream is. Um, so that, that was a basically a practice image. I'd not done pyrography a while, for a while. So I did that as a practice. And then <laughs> Puffy Twiggler will like this one. <laughs> That's a half-finished practice piece. <laughs> oh... Well, it's a not completed practice piece, shall we say, um, which is uh, obviously of a train. <laughs> I might finish that one of these days, just to, just for the practice. But you know, literally, it's been it's a practice, so it it didn't need to be finished as such. But I possibly will. And um, that's actually the uh, that image is the one that I used for, for one of the punch craft uh, items that we did um, that's all I've got in the studio I, I've done some others before but um, all apart from the two all that you've seen so far apart from the two practice pieces were done on stream Thank you, Orbex. That's uh, very kind of you. And we have um, three not so fat furries here. <laughs> um, Exilian. And we've got two male cats. You've seen images of both of them there. They do appear on street. Actually, and we've also got Cleo as a female cat, which for some reason is frequenting the studio quite a lot at the moment. Uh, she appeared on the. She made a very, very rare appearance on the stream about two nights ago. Um, or was it three nights ago? She kind of just laid on my knee here and then put her head on the desk. <laughs> so, um, I think for about twenty minutes, this camera was pointed at the cat, and uh, everybody preferred it. Um, Loch Ness, two fat furries. Pussy cats are nice. Be careful. Yeah. Mm. Mrs. Aragon out there says, send a prayer for Felix, who's not feeling very well today. A nine kilo cat. That is quite, um, quite sizable, providing it's not something like the, um, what's that cross between the tiger and the cat? What's they called? Bengals. Bengals. They're, they're, nine kilos might not be too bad for one of those. Or maybe a coon mane, something like that, which are... Uh, mane coon. Oh, okay. Well, I got the right two words, just in the wrong order, because they're big cats as well. Um, Mrs. Aragonat would love to see pictures if you want it to show them. If you don't, that's okay. Um, right. Back to the pyrography, otherwise we definitely won't finish it tonight. Uh, oh, that's a pity. 
<laughs> You're not sure, Matteo? <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't. So it will need to be English, I'm afraid. Well, I'm not afraid. It will need to be English. Yeah. Some people yeah, prefer dogs, Orbix, that's the way it is. If everybody was the same, it wouldn't be half as interesting. Um, and some people are allergic to cats, like Mrs. Aragonat, who's got a pussy cat laid on her knee at the moment. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mattia. That's kind of you. Hopefully now, as I'm just doing this, it, you should almost start to see that as being slightly further back. So we're starting to establish that curved shape. You're a dog person. There's nothing wrong with that fluffy twiglet. Some people are both. I know Mrs. Aragonite would love to have a dog. Something like... Um, well, she was saying a Labrador, but I'm actually thinking of something like the Huskies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> something that's big, rather chunky, but with lots of fur, which she's allergic to. <laughs> uh, big dogs. Yeah. She just wants something she can get her arms around and squeeze and that what object. Um, she's allergic to both. Ah, that's unfortunate, Orbix. My allergies aren't very nice. So. Um, some sometimes it's it's a particular type of fur. So some people are, are allergic to short hair animals, and some people are allergic to long haired animals. Uh, and sometimes it's not the hair at all. It's it's sort of the dander, I believe he gets called. Um, that uh, people are actually allergic to, but of course that's you know, in amongst the hair. So yeah, my partner's allergic to cats. Yes, it's it kind of can be strange. I say Mrs. Aragon Arts uh, allergic to uh, to cats, but um, wouldn't be without one. Uh, whether or not you become uh, used to it um, or not, I'm not quite sure. But uh, uh, thank you, Exilian. I'm glad that's exactly what they look like. <laughs> uh, they're the very first trees I've ever... Well, no, as I explained last night on the stream, apart from the ones in the African savannah that you saw in the background, the two, they're the very first trees I've ever done. Um, and I was quite pleased with the way they look. Uh, long head variety she's allergic to. Yeah. Kind of makes you almost wonder what it is about long hair that's different to short hair other than it just being longer but yeah some people yeah some people just are allergic my, you know, you might just have heard there Mrs. Aragon is actually quite strongly allergic to uh, Siamese cats just that particular breed of cats I'm going to just flip this over because I want to um, try and keep to the the panel edge with a dark area. I mean, I'm going to go over this and darken it down, but I want to keep to the panel edge here so I don't da over darken the bottom the bottom area. So if I do it this way up, uh, I've got I can use the tip of the uh, the pen here that I can actually see where the tip is so I can do it by by sight 
rather than um, trying to guess where the heel of the tool is when it's the other way up. <laughs> Thank you, Exilian. Okay, oh, three links. Oh, okay. Uh, three pussy cat pictures. Oh th no, three doggy pictures. Oh, and a, oh, all right. I'll get it right. Two doggy pictures and a pussy cat picture. Your three babies. Okay, I shall show these to Mrs. Zaraganart if she wishes to uh, just take a look. Sorry, you're okay. You can't be seen on the camera. Camera shy. That was an R to the uh, first link. I'm not so sure about the second one. She's going to like the third one. <laughs> you might have caught that one. A definite R. <laughs> yeah, black and white. With a diamond, uh, uh, the diamond on the nose and the chest. He looks he looks a little bit mischievous though, does that last picture. Though he's a he's a planning something. Or oh, she's planning something, I'm not quite sure which way it is. Um Have I been tempted to get a standard uh, what to this? Um No. It's too big. Um to uh, to do anything like this with really uh, and generally speaking it doesn't get hot enough it it will get hot enough if you sort of leave it on the board but it, it w doesn't really get hot enough to sort of create some of the um, the more darker textures as quickly as this does um, I would use it for example if the board was warping to actually sort of damp the back down and then uh, apply water to the back, then then iron it with a domestic iron. Um, then you could um, you'd use it quite a bit. Um, you can also get higher temperature irons that are used either for uh, on caustic art. Um, they also get used in uh, error modelling for heat shrinking film and and using it to effectively stick the film down. Um, they get hot enough as well to be able to do some of this, but uh, but they're a smaller iron. They're about that sort of size uh, as the shoe, uh, and they've got a sharper edge. So um, you know you can get straighter lines with them. Uh, Mike Hunt Negro. Okay. Good evening. Um, yeah, they are. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that's your granddad's dog. Okay, <laughs> I'm not repeating that. Uh, first is a cross between a Labrador and a Collie, and it's your first. Do oh, okay, and that's your yeah, lazy fat. Cat. He doesn't look like a fat cat, and he certainly doesn't look lazy. He looks like um, actually looks a bit like Junior. Is he's a big cat? He's actually muscle, um, rather than rather than being a fat big cat. <laughs> Oh, you have to offer, you have to distract him with food if you want to uh, stroke him. I see. One girl and two boys. Okay. So the first dog was a was a um, a girl, and the the second dog, which was a um, a granddad's, and the cat was a male as well. He was remotely active. Uh, okay. I suspect I was hunt for birds and things like that, but they don't actually tend to bring them in these days. Uh, I was darkening down this area, wasn't I?
is probably right as well thinking about it. I know uh, you, you, you sometimes see, well I sometimes see the cats outside doing just that. They'll just sit and watch uh, birds quite close by. Um, and the birds sort of you know, move around. It's only when the cat, and it's, I don't know, it's almost as though the cat does it on purpose. He'll sit there. When a bird comes a bit closer, he'll just shake his head or something, and the bird will go uh, and fly off. It's like he enjoys scaring them. Um, you wanted to call him him Mickey, <laughs> but you couldn't spell it. <laughs> so the cat's called Mikey. Okay. Sagini one or Sagini nil. Welcome. I think um I mean Felix is called Felix F. Well, I was about to say after the television adverts, I'm not actually sure. I mean, Felix. I came with the name. Sorry? I came with the name. Came with the name. Yeah. Oh, yes, he was a rescue cat, that's right. He was, um, and we didn't actually change the name. Yes, he, all, the cat, all the cats have either rescue cats or they've rescued themselves. Um, so both Cleo and Junior just turned up and eventually moved in. Um, and Junior, Junior get called Junior because there was a similar cat, which was an older cat, which got called Senior. <laughs> so Junior, it became. Yes, indeed, Fluffy Twiddler. I think they'll be back at school shortly. You know, the infants or the juniors are about to start again. Hmm. Let's turn this up a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, I just had an image cross my mind. I was thinking about trolls and uh, troll and, and and the you know the pussy cat watching the um, the birds, letting them come closer and then scaring them. And I, the the image that crossed my mind would be sort of some trolls and you, you sort of on stream sort of say, "Would you like to meet Fluffy?" and and get this sort of tiger <laughs> to full-size tiger to jump up on the desk and go uh, meet the pussy cat <laughs> um because am i going to include anything in the background uh no i'm not i've made that decision that uh, I, I i put these in the background here the job of them is to ground this to give you some sort of reference as to where it is don't want to put anything in front of the train it would tend to make it look like it's going to uh, immediately head straight into it um, so that when you're looking at something that's potentially moving it's a good idea to leave it some space to move into it's meant to be Florida blue skies I don't really want to put any clouds or anything in so no, I'm actually going to leave it like that at least I'm going to leave it like that and live with it for a while and may look at it again in a you know, a few weeks and go you know what um, and we may put something in it then but for the moment I'm going to leave it as it is <laughs> Joe's no seven uh, indeed <laughs> welcome this evening Uh, 
There are people that do keep sort of, you know, um, animals like tigers um, as house pets. Especially, certainly in the States. Um, one of the times we were over there, we went to a... Uh, a I don't know. I suppose I could call it a farm, but... Um, uh, Ice Bank, thank you very much for following. Um, and um, where they they kept things like uh, tigers and exotic animals, basically for their owners, so they they weren't living with the owners, but they were sort of. It was a specialist place where they could keep them, and you could go there and um, and see them, and meet them, like you know, meet some of the things like the cats, the ocelots. Uh, quite interesting and, and links cats with a f with a funny years and whilst we uh, whilst we were there we got to was it a baby tiger or lion, lion? leopard one a, 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 I thought it was an orange one but anyway yeah we, we got to actually play with you know, literally it touch um, a, a baby possibly a lion uh, or, or maybe it might have been a tiger cub not sure but you know one of the small one of the big small big cats <laughs> small because it was young um, but even so you know the um, uh, I mean it was uh, whilst it was there it was chewing on a sort of a five uh, well sort of a, a, well, about a two gallon plastic container just playing with it. it the paws on the thing you know was about the size of this board um, and it was just plain like any other cat. Um, any ideas on the next project? Am I a fan of traction engines? Um, I'm not a fan of traction engines. They are interesting. They're some lovely shapes and they're you know, nice to see. Um, I'll show her that in a second. She's going to like that one. Um, it's an interesting idea. Um, don't need fluffy twiglet we'll consider it a train but uh, we might uh, might look at that in the future do you want to take a look at this picture just before you uh... don't know if you caught that one fluffy twiglet but that was about a three second or oh, that was a long one she's here with a big grin on her face it's a pity you can't see <laughs> now she's giggling are you gonna? Yeah, she's gonna have a go check in on on how Felix is doing. He's been to the vets today. A land train, yeah, sort of. It is actually an interesting idea, though. Um, Orbix, thank you very much. I will actually. I'll do it now. Um, I keep a. Is it that one? I keep an, a, a notepad basically on it's got no oh, well I suppose it has got to do with engraving okay um let me just find where have I okay new page let me just put down on here traction engine Thank you. I keep a notepad or a note on the computer of um, ideas like that as they come up. And that's an interesting one. Traction engine. As I say, we might leave it for a little while, but it, it's definitely an interesting, uh, an interesting idea. Especially for pyrography because um, it, done in pyrography, it would tend to resemble a um sepia toned that's an old photograph basically uh which of course traction engines that's you know uh would sort of be suitable for that sort of thing right, let's see if i can crack on with this 
Mm, and that's a Yorkshire saying. I don't know if it's um, used elsewhere. I don't actually know quite what it means, but well, I know what it means, but I don't know where it came from. Now this can be one area where uh, it can get a little bit frustrating or, or impatience can kick in because I don't know if you can see there's like a white line just just across there which is really to do with the, the wood surface so when I put the flat pen down that's got a little dent so it doesn't take colour um, and uh, so I've got to go back in carefully to fill that in, but you can get impatient with that and um, start suddenly applying too much heat. Um, oh, okay, my dad's a model engineer. He's, he built he built the whole thing, including the boiler. A two inch, a two inch scale, two inch to the foot, I imagine. Um, so that's quite big. Uh, I'm assuming you do mean that rather than a two inch two-inch model <laughs> uh, which would be amazingly good engineering skill to do that yeah it's kind of kind of um, I've not really had the desire to make one uh, for you know scratch build one like that uh, build, uh, build one up from a kit of parts maybe but um, I'm not uh, not Whilst I am interested in the technology, the engineering, the lathe work, etc., to do that, I've never actually uh, uh, sort of seriously considered making one. Uh, where I, a long time ago, where I used to make, uh, used to work, there used to be a couple of guys there that were um, also model engineers, um, and they were working. Both of them were actually were working on steam engines. Um, but sort of, I forgot what the scale was, but the the boiler itself was about 18 inches long and about s sort of four or five inches diameter, so a fairly hefty engine. Yeah, oh, scale scale two or two inch, might be the same thing. Um, I'm trying to think what that is now. Because for those that people that don't know, you get scale 0, 1, 2, 3. I don't know actually what it goes up to. Um, they're getting bigger. Um, and then you go down in scale O, double O, and HO. Um, there's one in between that I can't remember. Uh, then you go to Z, um, N, and T. And then there's, there are some other odd ones in between as well as a G scale for garden scale and things like that. So two, either two, um, number two size or scale two is quite a large model. Uh, and so would two inch to the, to the foot. Either one <laughs> is quite large. I'm still got to get on with this. Well, if you um, if you were interested in showing any pictures of that Obix, that would be uh, okay and uh, interesting to see. Yeah, that's if you have any and want it to do so. That would kind of be something quite interesting to see on a um, on a broadcast. Uh, building a steam engine. about in the uh, anywhere else but in in the um, the UK if you build something of 
I forgot what the size is, but more than a certain size, you actually have to have the boilers pressure tested um, and have a actually uh, a, a boiler certificate for them. And um, the uh, the way they actually test them is they fill them up with water and and then pressurize the water. So they don't pressurize them with steam, and they they pressurize them with water in a safety cell. Because <laughs> if a a boiler goes, because some of these boilers reach quite in, intense pressures, um, and if a boiler explodes, it sends stuff a long way. So they test them. They test them um, to pass their rated um, pressure. Uh, I forgot what the safety margin is that they put on them, but it's it's quite a bit. And uh, they also, if I remember rightly, specify the um, what the safety valves have to be as well in terms of uh, release pressure. And every model boiler has to have a safety valve of some kind, or it has multiple plugs if it doesn't have a valve. So if it gets goes dry, for example, um, it gets too hot, and then the um, it's like a solder; it melts, and then you get a hole in it, and all the pressure goes, all the um, and, and it doesn't suddenly turn into an explosive device. Yeah. Yeah, very small boiler. I, um, it's, it's, I don't know what. Yeah, well, obviously you've got the idea there, uh, Eddie. Just about, just about anything. I think. Um, I think the sort of I was about to say the sort of things that used to be what do they call them? I think Nimrod or Ramrod, uh, little traction engines or or just traction motors that you used to get in in quotes toy ships. Um, I think they were just under the size that needed to be pressure tested for anything big, and they're they're only small things uh, but anything more than that needed to be yeah um, they can be spec they well i'll say they're spectacular when things like that explode it's not a good not a good thing to be around i have seen an airless football actually i didn't i didn't see it <laughs> i think that was the point um did hear uh, an aerosol can explode. Someone had thrown one in a fire. Um, but, um, it would appear to be empty. Um, it was a. Uh, it landed about and it, you know empty, but just pressurized from the heat. It landed uh, about two, three hundred yards away from the fire. Uh, when we found it, uh, it went off with one heck of a bang. And it well, it looked like it had just been peeled open, just like you know you peel an orange. It had, it had sort of done that sort of thing. It looked like a flat piece of metal. So I definitely, I was glad I wasn't in the path of that thing when it went up. And I wouldn't have been too pleased if I'd have found out who put it in the fire. Somebody who thought it would be fun, I guess. Uh, somebody steaming a jigsaw. Ah, uh, streaming a jigsaw. Oh, okay. Oh, that'd be f frustrating for uh, for somebody watching, wouldn't it? It's that piece there. No, no, that that piece. No, no, not that one. It's not going to fit. You want that? <laughs> I could just see that happening. Mm. That might turn out to be a rather popular stream. Question is, is it an interesting picture that they're um, that they're, they're creating? It raises an interesting challenge, doesn't it? Is is that truly something for the creative section or not? If you were making a jigsaw, yeah. Just um, as in, you know. This is a picture, turn it into a jigsaw. Um, but, hmm.
I'm getting a little bit impatient with that. Let's just do something different for a little bit. Let's darken this area down. The Reaper. Uh, is the tool legit or just an adjusted soldering iron? And what's not legit about a, an adjusted soldering iron or even a straight soldering iron? Because you could do it with one of those as well. Uh, if you're asking, is this a specially designed tool? It's a specially designed tool for, uh, for doing precisely this, which is pyrography. Um, there's a whole range of them. This one is particularly known as a flat shader. Um, but yes, this is a purpose designed tool. Um, the soldering iron stuff, as you call it, they're usually not adjusted. They just have, uh, uh, generally speaking, just a different tip on the end. Because um, a lot of them get used for stamps, creating stamps or brands. So they have a shaped tip like a heart or a diamond or something like that. But the, the standard conical tips, which is what you get on a soldering iron, you can use a standard soldering iron to do this sort of work. Yeah. If you heard that, that was Junior just saying hello for no apparent reason. <laughs> uh, no, actually, yeah, the Reaper is pretty hot. That's the whole point. <laughs> it's making the wood go brown. Sorry. That that's just tweaks my humour, does that? <laughs> when somebody says that about pyrography. It's challenging me tonight, is this. Um, I've got a, I've got a great, a great sense of impatience with it for some reason. Ah, TMJ, good morning, Australia. Welcome at 6 a.m up early and if that's up to see me thank you very much um you've got roses to plant well i hope they're done they, i hope they're done well i hope they're very nice roses um and they do well oh <laughs> that's a nice looking engine is that one amazing how po powerful they are isn't it when uh, you know something like that uh, or even the model train ones they pull you know five or ten people on carriages and things yep that's a nice looking model is that uh, uh obix thank you for uh, for showing it You're right, the reaper. But it is. It's, it's where the steam comes from. Yeah. The English language is funny sometimes. Oh, 
how the way it gets used is funny sometimes. Okay, well, there is a apply a little bit of shading around here. I'm just mm, darkening, darkening it down a little bit because, uh, as I mentioned, oops, it uh, it comes to sort of a, a sharpish point, like the the front of a boat, just around there. The idea, I guess, being to to make it look aerodynamic. So uh, what I need to do is just shade it a little bit. I don't think I need much shading, but uh, just uh, just enough um, to imply that sort of um, slightly different shape. So you know, this this is a white stripe in in sort of the model or the the real or what was the real engine. So. want to darken this edge too much just because I don't want to sort of be fighting for contrast with the stuff behind it. I get too close to that uh, background uh, shade and uh, it'll no longer stand out quite so much. <laughs> Thank you uh, TMJ. It's um well, I could say sort of practice, but um, I don't. Most people have a reasonably steady hand. One of the tricks is uh, about it, I guess, is not to try and hold it too tight. The tighter you hold a pen, the the less fluid you can be, and the more you tend to shake. Um, so, being relaxed um, helps a great deal. But essentially, the um, if you were sort of unsteady with it, it's not really fantastically a problem most of the time. Depends on if you're trying to um, be really to create really dark areas in one go. So you're moving really slowly, then shaking might be a problem. But if you're uh, you're doing sort of large areas, um, you the amount of colour you're adding. Uh, it's a good idea actually to be somewhat uh, random about the movement so that you don't get a straight line uh, sort of down here for example in the middle of a, sh a shadow you probably want a consistent colour so sometimes shaking is a good thing. Um, what was the name of the monorail again? Is there footage of it? Uh, there probably will be. Um, it's from Walt Disney World in Florida uh, from sort of Epcot. This w this is probably about 15 years ago though. Um, I know they've replaced them at least once since then. I actually have no idea what they currently look like. I, I think they possibly have a, still have a similar shape but I don't actually know. Um, but there will be um, there will be sort of images and, and moving images of them. There are there are websites dedicated to the trains, these you know these monorails, uh, and the the them running around the park. So you get the history of them, um, and the history of the the track layout that they use and things like that. So I'm sure you'll be able to find some uh, some moving images. OK, 
Okay, and that's not bad. And I probably need to just darken this bit down a bit. TMG. I mean, one of the yeah, one of the first uses um, of that sort of traction engine was in farming as a track, literally as a tractor. Although I think when they first had them, they used to use long cables to pull the uh, ploughs rather than um, the thing itself trundling up and down the field. But I think that's um, that's where they uh, originally got used. Right, so and that fades out just around there which is good I need a little bit more there and a little bit oh sugar a little bit more there it's got a bit dirty hmm. Some using the pen in certain ways um, gives different characteristics. Now it's not an it's not an even heating uh, on this particular pen or this particular nib. Um, so when I use it this way, which is uh, I'm using the tip and dragging in this direction, it has a tendency for me for me to to get dark areas that I don't want. Um, I find it safer to use it in that direction. <laughs> now what I've just done is just the top edge of this lighting um, cutout has now disappeared uh, into that sort of darkened area. So what I need to do is just make it reappear. I'm going to do by a very light application now uh, you know, I've got almost a dark line here but um, which stands out at this distance I'm looking at but as you can see now it doesn't really stand out on there but you've now brought I've now brought that edge back and I was losing the losing the contrast on um, so it's a bit darker down here than I really wanted I'm stuck with it now um, I'm going to disguise it a little bit though. That is one of the dangers. You get an area and it just gets a little bit darker than you intended. Have a good night, Fluffy Twiggler. Thank you very much for dropping in. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.
Mm, it went a bit too dark. It went a bit too dark just around there. I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to see just how if I can do this really gently. And that is, just see if I can apply a little bit of scraping just to remove some of that dark area. Now I'm going to do this in. It's quite a small area. I might get away with this. Normally, I don't like um, scraping it away because it changes the surface texture. Now I'm doing this with a brand new scalpel blade. And I'm doing it with the back edge of the blade. So you can see the angle of the blade I'm scraping this way I'm not cutting I'm literally scraping I'm trying to be as light as I can Yes, Obix, but doing that would actually change the surface texture. And then when I py apply pyrography over the top of it again, it will stand out. You'll you'll always be able to see it. So um, I don't uh, potentially I don't want to do that for that reason. I mean, it's see if I can show you on here. Um, this more visible in the light I've got here, but can you see? You see that there? Can you, um, and I can I can see it all the way to the edge of the board. Um, that was a piece of tape that was on the board before pyrography was applied. It was quite loosely applied. Um, it came off clean. There's no resi sticky residue or anything on there, um, but it just affected the surface texture a little bit. And uh, here, I mean, I can see it quite clearly here. Yeah. So that's. So you know, if I if I was to have, you know sand, it, it's it's you know that's that's just tape, just pulling tape off. Uh, sanding it would uh, would change it as well. Um, and change the surface texture and you get you get something similar potentially it'll do it'll do just that with me scraping it but um, what I'm hoping is that it won't be too visible <laughs> it just it it was it was and is too dark so um, I don't have a lot to lose really I'm trying, you know, holding this as light as I can so that I don't really affect the the wood surface texture, because the the brown is rather like a varnish which sits on top. So if I hold, if I'm holding it lightly enough, the the intent is that I scrape the surface varnish off without affecting the wood texture underneath.
Yeah, well, that's what happens sometimes. You know, you can't. Uh... Oh, it's almost back. It's almost okay. That's one reason why I like to work in a you know, fairly, I won't say slowly, that's the wrong impression, but work with light, shade, you know, uh, small increments of shade. I guess I was a little bit impatient here, because um, you know, if I was to do this on just a small increment uh, of shade, it, well, either I wouldn't have bothered, it'd just be very slightly off the colour I intended, um, or I could apply uh, a scraping technique to it very very gently and get away with it this is going to be all right <laughs> yeah, this is a different take on scraper board. <laughs> but you know, we are getting to see a, a real life fix. <laughs> If you imagine trying to do it on something like this, it's almost impossible. Um, Look all that looks like now. Okay, other than now needing just a little bit of shading just there, just so that it matches, that's okay. Um, I think I maybe need to do a little bit of, of colour reduction in here as well, just a tiny bit, but that's now okay. So that looks like it's maybe, maybe fixed. Um, I won't bother applying any pyrography over the top of that because it will just darken it again. So I'm I'm going to leave that exactly as it is. It's even here. It's got a reasonable colour to it, so that's okay. Tyler the farmer. Good evening. Um, it was going absolutely fantastic until I made a slight mistake. Just trying to make sure I'm going in the direction of the grain. That way I'm less likely to disturb the surface texture. So if I do need to go over it, it will have a minimal effect, hopefully. And just a slight bit in there. That looks okay. Yep, that's okay. So, right. So we can actually just almost carry on. Let me turn that heat down a little bit. <laughs> I mentioned I wanted to just get a touch in there a bit. 
just somewhere. Swazen, thank you very much. Good evening. You go to school tomorrow, Tyler the Farmer. Okay. May not feel like a good thing uh, now, but it definitely is. Just get the best out of it. That you can, otherwise you'll wish you had later. That's okay now then. I'm going to turn this down a little bit more because I want to apply a little bit more bother. The back end of that tool caught. You know what? I'm going to fix this and then I'm going to ensure that we don't make any more mistakes tonight. happened there was the um, I caught the the what will be called the heel of the tool on the wood and because I hadn't been using that part of the the, the tool it was hotter than the rest and so I've got this um, slightly dark mark don't need patience for doing this. Patience comes with doing it wrong in the first place. I think that will be about as far as I can take that. Um, The one thing I do need to do now though is carefully we've got now having darkened this down a bit again I've got this I'm losing losing the very edge here of the headlamp opening. What I'm doing is using the extreme sharp edge if you like of the this tool. Just to put in enough of a mark there, so we it looks like a shadow here, but it's it's enough of a mark just to distinguish the um, the top edge. Mars bars eighty seven ninety five. Welcome. No, they were not. <laughs> um, 
now they're like cylindrical holes uh, in this in, uh, the the front of this is kind of wing shaped or, or comes to a point and so there's holes drilled they're slightly off center um, or off to one side um, so they're drilled into this sort of area here uh, which gives you that that sort of ovalish sort of shape um, but to avoid making any more mistakes tonight <laughs> I'm going to stop making any sorts of movements this tonight I'm going to stop uh, doing it all together uh, we are very close to finishing it I do have some more shading down here to do perhaps a little bit around there but not too much so this is lighter than I want it to be it's close but I need it a little bit darker. I possibly need to do a little bit just along the edge of there as well. It's um, because this this isn't quite dark enough. You can see you can see that the sort of a dark band across there, which is giving you the impression of it sort of disappearing under a little bit. But it's it's not quite right. So there is a bit more work to do on that. So we'll finish it probably on the next stream. But I'm going to give up tonight before I make any more um, mistakes. And we'll start again tomorrow night. Fresh pair of eyes, fresh pair of hands. Maybe Murphy will have walked out of the room. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. So we'll finish a little bit early. But um, that's probably for the best, I think. So what I'm going to do now is say... Thank you everybody for watching. It has been great fun having you around talking about cats and traction engines and anything else. Um, if there's anybody watching that isn't following, I do of course encourage you to follow. Push the follow button below the window. And the idea then is Twitch will tell you when I go live. If you don't trust it, and some people don't, you're welcome to follow me on Twitter at Zaragonart um, and the details will be both on the end plate and the below the stream window as well that way you'll get the notification when I go live um, without needing to trust Twitch on the other hand if you'd just like to try and catch me on a future stream I stream from approximately 8pm UK time 1900 hours GMT or about two hours ago uh, every night so I'll hope to see you all again. Um, and Obix, if you don't see it finish, you don't see the finish of it, just ask on the next time you're on. I'll quite happily show you. And uh, thank you all. Have a good evening. Hope to see you again in the future. Bye bye.